guys, how's it going? Today I am planting a miniature salsa garden in this galvanized tub. I'm going to be planting almost all the components for salsa anyway. I've got the main stuff. So pepper, a bunch of tomatoes, some cilantro. I already have a ton of onions and garlic planted out in the garden, so I didn't really want to incorporate that. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys that this is a really fun option to do these little themed gardens. And if you don't have uh, the space to grow all of these things in like an uh, actual garden space or in a raised bed somewhere, um, that you can still do it in containers. And I have done other themed gardens in the past. Last year we did like this little uh, elevated raised bed with a cocktail garden theme. And then I found out the week after I planted it that I was pregnant with Samantha Grace. So I didn't get to try any of those fun cocktails that I had planned to use all those things for. And so that's something that I may even end up doing this year so that we can try those out. Um, and then the year before I did a spaghetti planter, which had garlic and tomatoes and um, uh, oregano and a bunch of other stuff. And I can't really remember. Anyway, I forgot to update you guys on that. I think we just got busy. Everything did great in that container. But this year I am purposing to bring you along for this whole journey. We'll plant it today. We're actually going to be putting in cilantro seed, not plants, and then the other plants. And then uh, hopefully later on, on, everything goes really well and we can make some salsa together. That's my plan. So let's start with the container galvanized tub 24 inch uh, diameter here. We can actually fit quite a bit in here. I am going to be putting this container on drip. So I have my drip supplies here. If I tip this upside down, you can see that, well, you can clearly see I've been using this container for years now and you can see the dr uh, drain holes that we popped in it. We used a metal drill bit to drill those holes out the bottom and that's super important. Like galvanized containers are great, but you do have to make sure that that drainage is there. So I'm just gonna take this, uh, ha a quarter inch rather, black poly tubing right up through the bottom of one of these drain holes. Uh, I do plan on raising this container up a little bit. I either am gonna go grab a couple of pavers or something or some pot feet just to help with drainage because the drain holes aren't that big. So anyway, it won't be a problem in terms of like crimping the tubing on the back side here. So I've got that piece and then I've got a quarter inch coupler that I just dropped. Hold on. Quarter inch coupler right here. That's a T coupler. I'm going to put that into this black poly and then we're going to put our quarter inch brown drip tubing in a circle around the whole container. So we'll attach one side like this and then I want to kind of gauge how much I need here kind of want it like right on the interior of where I'm going to plant all the tomato plants. So I think about that as perfect. So we've got how many drip emitters? There's one every six inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They all emit a half gallon of water per hour, um, just to give you guys an idea. And if it seems like they're getting too much water, I can always come in and cut a piece of this out and then make my circle again, just to eliminate some of the emitters. Um, or I can just make sure the zone doesn't run as long if that's a possibility. So that's all there is to drip. I mean, this is the other end that I will connect into our zone where we're going to put our container. So the next thing I need to do is add soil. Let me move all this stuff off real quick. We've got our potting mix. This is organic potting mix. I've been using forever works really well don't want to use regular garden dirt I know when you're especially when you're filling a container that's a little bit bigger it, you kind of want to resist the urge to go out and like dig some garden soil and put it in it just does not act the same in containers it tends to comp like compact and it gets really hard it, it's really hard for drainage so you want to use a just straight up potting mix like this one here and I think it's going to take between two and three bags maybe just two bags these are one cubic foot bags. I actually, I used to garden or use the two cubic foot bags. And then I got to a point where I didn't want to be lifting two cubic foot bags everywhere. I don't think it's a good practice, especially with as many bags as we use to lift that many. So one cubic foot bags are really uh, manageable for me, for now. <laughs> yep, two bags. So two cubic feet of soil. I might top it off with a little bit more. That's a little bit too much of a lip. See, it kind of compacts a little bit. You kind of want to press down, not super hard, but a little bit just to help settle it. I only want about an inch lip here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. Boy, I wish we could raise all of our pots up on the gator for me to plant. Standing is very nice. <laughs> and then the shade, a very pleasant project for today. All right. Got my fresh soil in here. Now I'm gonna add in a little slow release fertilizer. Use the Biotone starter fertilizer if that's what you have. Use Garden Tone if that's what you have. Plant Tone works as well. 
I am gonna add in whatever this bag recommends me add, so I need to read it. So it says, when preparing soil for new plants, mix two cups of garden to tone per cubic foot of soil, which means I use two cubic feet of soil. I would need to use four cups, but since I'm not gonna be able to really mix it all the way down, I'm just gonna add two cups into the top, and that's kind of where the root zone of these plants are anyway. I think we'll be fine. Plus, I don't really measure anyway, so it's likely I'll get a little over two cups. Okay, spread that around and mix it in. And then other than this feed, because it's a slow feed, I'll probably come in um, and I'll try to remember to include that in a video at some point and side dress the plants with more garden tone, maybe once in the season. That's typically what I do. Um, I think they recommend you could even do more than that, like every month. I'm lucky if I get it done one more time in the season. But anyway, so we've got a prepped container here. You can see how the drip system, that's perfect. I love it. So now we need to do our centerpiece plant, which is our pepper. Now this pepper is called hot and heavy. I've grown it as long as Proven Winners has had it available. And I was, I think I even got to test it the year before they came out with it. Um, and so it's been maybe three years or so. Super happy with the yield of these plants. Last year I had a huge bumper crop of these. I was so impressed and I was even able to harvest enough off of, I only think I planted just maybe four or five plants, but I was able to harvest a ton for both fresh use and then I strung a bunch and they're dried and they're hanging in our root cellar still and I'm able to go out there and grab some and crush them up and use them in recipes all the time. In fact, I just did it this last week for a pasta recipe um, that we grew or that we <laughs> made uh, and it was really yummy. So the thing about these peppers, I feel like they're a really versatile one because they aren't so hot they're, they're gonna blow your lid off, um, but they aren't super mild either. So you can use them kind of in both ways. Like a jalapeno on the Scoville scale, which the Scoville scale, it measures heat units of plants, of, of the peppers. They clock in between, like for a really mild jalapeno, it's right at 2,500 units and it can go up to 8,000. This one clocks in at about 2,100 units. So it's a little bit more mild than a mild jalapeno. 65 to 72 day maturity on this one. Um, and then they just start bearing, I mean, just loads. And they do benefit from staking. So I actually have this. This is like a little itty bitty peony ring almost. This is gonna be perfect um, because they get so loaded with fruit and the fruit are heavy that um, it can make your plant kind of split if you don't have it um, protected at all. So now we're gonna do a ring of cilantro, which I'm planting these, these from seed, which I usually find I hardly, I don't think I've actually ever, have I ever planted a cilantro from a plant that was pre-grown? I don't think I have. Cilantro is easy to grow from seed. It comes up super fast. This right here is what the seed looks like. Little round spheres. They're right, kind of ribbed. I'm gonna go right in here, create about a quarter of an inch uh, little furrow, trench, whatever, uh, around the pepper plant. And then we're just gonna sprinkle these in. It'll seem kind of heavy. We can thin them out later or not. Uh, we can just use these and just cut them all fresh. They can come up like little baby greens. I tend to err on the heavy side, obviously. <laughs> you guys know this. I like to plant things heavy. Okay. And then if that cilantro peters out, because you know, with the intense heat it wants to bolt really quickly you can pull out the cilantro and seed it again so we're just going to cover over that seed hindsight i probably should have planted my tomatoes first because i'm going to totally wreck the soil <laughs> where i just planted the seed but i wanted to go in order dang it okay next plant we've got the good hearted tomatoes which has the exact same maturity uh, as the peppers and the maturity of 65 to 72 days is after transplant so after you put your your plant in the ground now these grow uh, they top out like at 12 inches and the pepper tops out at about two feet so we'll have a nice it'll look pretty um, we'll have a nice centerpiece cilantro will be about here and then these will be about here so I have a little bit of a layered effect um, and then they spread out mine usually spread out maybe like 18 or so inches but the fruit set on these is like you can't compare it with anything else it's absolutely incredible the amount of fruit that they produce um, I think I've got some pictures of mine from the raised bed garden last year just like you could hardly see leaves for so many fruit on that plant I'm trying to be careful so I don't mess up my cilantro. 
but I think I'm gonna tuck like maybe five or six of these around the out, outer part. You do not have to stake these. You can if you want to, but because they stay so small and compact, they kind of will just trail over the side of this container um, and they'll just be a nice little trailer plant, really. So let me finish around the outer portion here. One, two, three, I think five will be perfect. I am popping off the leaves that would touch the soil and you can even plant these a little bit deeper. So let me show you because along the stem, the whole plant will produce more roots. So if you've got kind of a longer plant, you can pop it further down in the soil, cover over the stem with some of your potting soil there, and then it'll produce more roots. It'll be a stronger plant for it. So these tomatoes, they're like cherry size and they have a um, bricks rating of nine. So the brick scale is one that measures sweetness in fruit. And uh, like a really good grape has a 20, a rating of 20 on the brick scale. These have a rating of nine, which is a really good sweet tomato. Um, I mean, we don't want ours to clock in at 20 like grapes because we don't want tomatoes that sweet, uh, but they've got just a really good pleasant flavor. Okay, two more. Pop these lower leaves off. I don't think I've messed up any of the cilantro yet. And that's it. That is our salsa garden right there. Now you can take these types of gardens any direction, um, like, cause you could use all of this stuff really for um, a lot of other different recipes. And there are a lot of other different, like you can do tea gardens, um, herb gardens, cocktail gardens, spaghetti gardens, like we talked about earlier, the salsa garden, uh, whatever. You can take it whatever direction you want. It's just a really fun way to experiment with smaller plants that still like these will produce so many tomatoes. And if I were to put this out in my garden, it tends to get swallowed up, especially when you've got tomato plants that grow really, really big. So these are just really well suited for hanging baskets. Um, so if you all you have is a balcony where you don't have a lot of floor space, but you can hang something, one of these good hearted tomatoes would be a really great option for you so long as they get enough sun. So we're gonna take this to a spot that will get minimum of six to eight hours of sunlight. We'll have it watered every day with the drip system, and then I'll come along mid season with some more garden tone and um, give it a little bit more food. But other than that, this should be a pretty easy garden to maintain. So I think we'll actually show you where we're gonna keep these. It's nowhere fancy. It's out where I planted all the other tomatoes that I have and we're doing the Florida weave system. So I have a bunch of T-posts and rope. It's out on the new property. Um, I'm thinking if I tuck it at the end of one of those beds, we can tap into that drip system and that way it'll be watered the same as the rest of my tomatoes and I think everything will be happy being on that same kind of watering situation. So let's head out there. All right, so we're out here by where I planted the other 30 tomato plants. We've got most of that row, actually all of that row I started from seed. They're a little bit smaller and then the front part of this row are garden treasure tomatoes and we've got garden gems in the back and you can see our drip system right here already set up and our nice crop of puncture vines that we have coming up. Kind of Nice. <laughs> anyway, I think we're just going to tack into the drip system right here and we'll just set the pot right on top of these so that the um, holes can drain freely. What do you think? That looks pretty level. Looks pretty level. Heave ho. Ugh. Hopefully that these plants don't get blown to smithereens out here. They're not really protected by anything, but I think it'll be really perfect. And then we can kind of judge the uh, tomato yield versus the tomato yield on those right there. This one got messed up a little bit. Okay, let me show you how I'm gonna tap into the drip system. So I've got this tool right here. This is a punching tool, and then I've got some uh, couplers. Quarter inch straight coupler right here. So what I'll do is push the coupler into my quarter inch drip tube here, like that. And then this system is currently on, so this is gonna spray. I'm gonna try to go really fast. What I'm gonna do is punch the half inch with this tool and then tap this in. And we're gonna do it quick. <laughs> okay. Gah, gah, gah. Okay, I can't see where the hole is. Okay. I only got a little bit wet. It's all, it's all good. And your phone got all wet, <laughs> I can see. <laughs> Dang it. I thought I would be a little bit quicker at that. 
Oh yeah, it's running. So you guys, I don't expect this to take care of the seeds so much. Like it's actually probably right on where I have the seeds. Um, but what I'll do for the next probably week is I'll, I come out here every day anyway to check on stuff in the high tunnels. Um, I will make sure that this stays really moist. Like the, the moisture is really well covering, especially for the seeds, because you have to keep them wet. Once you get them wet, uh, once you've planted them, you have to keep them wet until they germinate. Otherwise you lose your point of germination and you'll just have spotty growth. So anyway, we'll just make sure the moisture is consistent everything else should be great with these plants and I'm looking forward to giving you guys updates if you give it a try let me know um, let me know what varieties you choose because there are other small varieties out there um, that you can go with or you can do bigger containers I mean you could do like the galvanized troughs like I just planted the blueberries in and you can choose larger size things but I think that these will be perfect for this smaller galvanized tub anyway thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye